People deluded, I'm back again. Thank you very much for tuning in each and every time. Big up you lot tuned in again. Don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe and turn on your notification bells. Let's see the latest news, rumours and talking points where relation to Arsenal is people. Again, smash the like button and make sure after this video you're checking out the rest of the content. Now, allegedly, Ryan Taylor um, has uh, tweeted, I think he works for the um, for Sport, Evening Standard or whatever it's called. Forgive me for mispronunciations. Apparently, one name that could enter the thinking of Arsenal this winter is Monaco's Yusuf Fufana. Sources close to Fufana have indicated Monaco are prepared to consider a jam sell as the player's current deal is due to expire in the summer of 2025. Mikel Arteta is understood to be an admirer of the player and was spotted in conversation with Fufana after the Emirates Cup clash in August. Although it must be laid on record that Arsenal are yet to make any contact over a deal. Again, as we assess our midfield, uh, uh, our midfield in January and we try and cope with the injuries to Partey and probably being a bit light there. And even if Partey um, woke up and he was in full fitness tomorrow, a bit like Tommy Asu, who ironically is injured and out for this festive period in January. You know, Tommy Asu, who's a defender, could be going to the Asia Cup. Obviously, Tommy uh, Tommy Asu's teammate Thomas Partey could be representing Ghana in the Africa Cup of Nations. So even if they were fit, and I guess to be able to play some game, they still wouldn't be there. Obviously, for me, injuries can happen, and to the degree we've seen this as well, we've seen injuries can derail any team. You see how City struggled without a couple, United, Chelsea, and also Arsenal, um, along with a bunch of other teams. Newcastle have had to cope with a lot of injuries. Um, we've seen this theme for the last couple of seasons. We knew that we were trying to compete at least in all four cup, um, cup competitions or four opportunities to win a trophy. Of course, we're out of the League Cup and we know the games are coming thick and fast. We've got three games every seven to ten days. We know the dynamics really and truly of, what we're, of, of what's required. Now, we're linked with a lot of names in January. Whether we're able to sign Douglas Luiz, I don't buy that, but him, Paulinho recently or Fulham, etc. I'd be keen for it for you, Farno. You know, the first thing is the evident French ties. Obviously, he's a bit of a tenacious, ball-winning box-to-box midfielder, which an occasion shows an eye for goal. I can't remember his age, but I think he's in his mid-20s, so that's decent. He's been on the scene for a while. Obviously, I'm sure he used to play for Strasbourg as well. Um, you know, obviously, we don't know why he had a conversation with Arteta. Arteta could have, could have been probably starting to gas him to sign for Arsenal one day, or he could have just been praising him about... Um, you know, having a good game or it could have been banter. But I would take him for what it's worth. Obviously, we've sold Balogun to Monaco, so I guess there's a decent rapport between the two teams. Uh, if you're Monaco, I don't know what where they are in the French division or what they're competing for. And obviously, his contract is up in, is up in 2025. But surely they want him to stay for what remains of their season. Now, obviously, in the summer, I don't know if they've got an option to extend his contract by a further year. They probably say, you know what, let's sell him in the summer. In theory, maybe get a reduced fee where you've got two windows to get something. For me, if there's an opportunity to get it done, I'm all for it as well, people. Again, he's a French international and he has a lot of pedigree. He could play in, in place of Declan Rice. Declan Rice can begin pro properly playing in that number eight position. I'm all for it, really and truly. I think Fufana would be a good addition to the club. Now, this article in the Daily Mail spoke about a lot of stuff. It praised Arsenal, actually, you know, for the win against Luton and how we sang <laughs> Rice, Rice, baby in the dressing room. Um, it spoke about Tommy Asu's injury again, he faces the prospect of being out for a minimum of four months, four definitely not four months, four weeks. Apologies with a calf injury, and he's understood to be missing Aston Villa, Brighton, Liverpool, West Ham, and Fulham. Now, for me to not have Timber, Tommy Asu, and Partey as options for Mikel Arteta in this festive period, it does kind of upset me because they're three of our best players when it comes to one v one duels, and you're going to need to do that at Anfield. But we're going to have to get on with it. Should Tommy Asu get fit, you know, obviously the Asia Cup game. The Asia Cup games begin on the 12th of January of 2024. You'd imagine, best case scenario, Tommy Asu might be able to sneak a game or two before he goes to compete there. So, again, I think midfield should be the priority, but I do think we need another defensive 
body. We need a midfielder. And obviously, long term, probably in the summer, we need a striker and a winger. I think they're all of equal importance and probably need to start drawing up targets for a potential number two goalie. As we know, this David Raya versus Aaron Ramsdale thing, it can't really persist beyond this season, people. But this article uh, spoke about the injury. Obviously, Benjamin White has had a knock as well. We all saw how our season was derailed by Saliba being injured last year. But this the Daily Mail said, with that in mind, Arsenal will prioritise signing a defender when the transfer window reopens next month, but will also be in the market for a midfielder. I don't know if we'll look at a loan deal or, or whatever in that regards. With FFP, allegedly, we're treading closely. I don't know how much budget there is to spend. So it could happen. It might not happen. If possible, Arsenal would prefer to loan a new midfielder next month as they await the return to fitness of part Thomas Partey, who is currently unavailable due to injury. In the summer, Arsenal will focus their attentions on signing a permanent central midfielder and striker. So, you know, we did get Odegaard initially on loan. We have had Danny Ceballos on loan. We have had Kim Kalstrong on loan. I'm pretty sure a lot of us Arsenal fans forget Denny, uh, Denny Suarez was on loan. We have dipped into the loan market on occasion. I know he's not a midfielder, but Matt Ryan. But again, I don't know. I, it's not my job, but what I would say is who is available on loan. It looked like in theory, you know, former Wolves man and current uh, El Halal midfielder Ruben Neves, that could have been an angle to explore really to tie us over of what remains of this season, Premier League proven, etc, etc. Again, what you say in public isn't necessarily what's held in the private and, you know, Every player, every every player has come out and said they're not leaving a club or they're happy at a club, and you've seen them move, so you can't rule it out. But with his comments recently, you know, saying him and his family are happy in Saudi Arabia and kind of quashing the Newcastle and Arsenal links, that that that's where you're at with it. Obviously, in the January market. We have to go and, and, and find targets. But as you know, a lot of agents will, you know, if agents are doing their jobs on behalf of their midfield or defensive clients, if you're able to contact Edu, then obviously you're going to try and put players in front of him, a bit like Trossard. We all know Trossard's a good addition, a Premier League proven player, et cetera, et cetera. But when you listen to his agent, his agent literally said, I offered him to Arsenal. Obviously, he was offered to Arsenal. The deal made sense, especially after not getting Mudrick, Premier League proven, didn't break the balance, et cetera, et cetera. You know, you have to imagine Zinchenko, Cole Kirio have played in midfield. There are potential avenues for Mikel Arteta to explore. I've been saying in the summer, I don't think we're strong enough in midfield. I did think we were stronger than, in hindsight, what we've actually seen in defence. Injuries can happen. As I've said prior, you know, I wouldn't be against bringing in someone of the timber and Tommy Asset ilk that can play across the whole back four or if someone could play left back and right back. This is why Newcastle's new sign in Lever Mentor would have been great. For me, in an ideal world, you know, for the start of next season. So between January and the summer, I know I'm a bit greedy, but, you know, I would like another number two goalie to to deal with what's going to go on with Aaron Ramsdale and David Raya. I do think another fullback and another centre-half wouldn't go and miss. I do think we need a couple of additions in midfield. And I think every Arsenal fan would, no would love another winger that maybe could compete with um, Bakayo Saka or deputise for him to a high standard. And I think we all like a striker. So January is a reactive market. We're going to have to be creative and proactive. And Mikel Arteta or more so Edu are going to have to find solutions, people. Um, once again, people, Edu has allegedly delivered a transfer message. Apparently, Edu has indicated the Gunners are reluctant to stand still this winter ahead of a dramatic last gasp, uh, last gasp uh, victory against Luton. He said, to work for a football club like Arsenal, it's always busy, isn't it? You need to put in a lot of effort and energy and dedicate a lot of time. But of course, in January and the summer, it does intensify a bit. We are prepared. We have big people around the club to support me and the decisions. We always have our targets. It's important to be prepared for every single scenario that is important. So hopefully we was prepared for the scenario and the climate we're currently in, um, entering. Allegedly, sources have indicated that Arsenal are expected to oversee a quiet transfer window, but with the games coming thick and fast over the festive period. Injuries are likely to shape business. However, it's no secret the Gunners will have to be cautious of FFP regulations following an expensive 208 million summer transfer splurge that has left them sailing close to the win. Um, as we know, that's why David Raya joined initially on loan. And you'd imagine at the end of the campaign, when it makes sense to pull it down in the, in the accountant books, David Raya's 27, you know, the other 27 million will be ran to, to, to Brentford and it'll be a 30 million pound package in total. In terms of sales, obviously, Eddie and Ketty, Reese Nelson, Aaron Ramsdale, Jorginho, Thomas Partey, all of these players have been linked with moves away. 
unless we're replacing and bettering them, which I don't predict uh, an overly busy January period, I don't think it makes sense, you know, whether you rate these players or not. We need these players to participate in whatever is left of this season, people. In the summer, whoever wants to cut, cut. As we know, Newcastle have had injuries as well with now Nick Pope, obviously fueling both David De Gea and Aaron Ramsdale deals. If you're Newcastle, you probably want Aaron Ramsdale on loan. Arsenal probably want 50 million. Are you going to spend 50 million on Aaron Ramsdale when Nick Pope is your number one and you're going to find yourself in a in a territory where somebody, something's going to have to give? I don't know, people. Um Apparently, despite reports, Newcastle are expected to make a push for 25-year-old shot stopper. Ramsdale may opt to consider any approaches that materialise in the coming weeks where regular minutes are on offer. A goalkeeper of his quality and potential is unlikely to be short of admirers. Outside of Ramsdale, the injured Smith, Rowan and Ketty are two names that are likely to generate interest this winter. But so far, there is no indication Arsenal are prepared to sell at this moment in time. That stance could change further down the line. Kirio is being courted by AC Milan, but he remains a firm part of Mikel Arteta's plans as showcased on Tuesday night when he started at left back ahead of Zinchenko. I understand if Kirill would like more game time and I understand if AC Milan would like to sign him. It seems like they need a centre-half or a defender. They've been linked with a few. Obviously, Kirill's made his name in Italy. He knows the league and he can't really buy significant game time at Arsenal. But again, kind of what I just said earlier with the other players, Kirill, if you want to leave in January, which I don't, I mean in the summer, which I don't necessarily think you do, do what you need to do, but we need bodies. It does not make sense, really and truly. We know Timber's out. We know currently Thomas Partey's out. We know Benjamin White is struggling with injuries, and him and Tommy Asu are set to sign new deals. Again, Cedric Suarez, he's a magician, really and truly. He's gone missing more than Enzo Fernandez and Caicedo latest at Old Trafford because everyone forgets Cedric's here, and he pops up on the bench every now and again. I'm sure we will listen to offers. Uh, where defenders go on, apparently, defence alongside central midfield is now expected to be an area of priority for Arsenal this winter. Fiorentina right-back Michael Coyote and Genoa left-back Miguel Gutierrez, who have been linked before, are among those to have been scouted this season. The Gunners could also seek to explore the loan market and they do currently have one spot left that is free to fill within their loan quota. If Arsenal do have the cash to sanction a notable January arrival, a central midfielder would surely prove favourable following Thomas Partey's recent fire injury. And again, he's also set to play for Ghana at the African Cup of, the Na uh, Cup of Nations at the turn of the year. Various sources contacted by Mirror Football have provided mixed signals on reported interest in Fulham's João Paulinho. While he's believed to be internally appreciated by Arsenal, no talks have taken place over a deal and he's expected to be out of their price range anyways as much as Bayern Munich are looking for him as well people apparently he would ideally he'd prefer to remain in the Premier League if he was to leave Craven Cottage he turns 29 next summer and obviously on the face of it he doesn't fit Mikel Arteta's plans and I do think you know obviously you want a bit of a younger model but I do think football fans or definitely Arsenal fans once we start hearing 28 29 30 we're like oh oh my god there's there's problems there of course Injuries and things, the older you get, the more there's question marks. But, you know, Paulinho, obviously, you know, he's an all-action midfielder, so you need to be fit. But it's not like his game is reliant on blistering pace. It's, it's a bit like Declan Rice in that the bulk of your game is about positioning, intelligence, um, anticipation skills, etc. And at 29, I'm not being funny, but you could easily play until you're like 33 odd. And in that time, I know it wouldn't be a long-term investment in terms of resale value and long-termism, but you could find the younger model and obviously he might help us win some significant trophies. I think there's an appreciation. I think there's a willingness to get a deal done, but he signed a new deal recently at Fulham. And, you know, if he is going to play, go, move from Fulham to another Premier League team, they're going to have to play Premier League prices. And I can't see us doing that in January, um, really and truly, even if we're treading closely to FFP. But for what it's worth, would love Paulinho. We've once again been linked with Fufana people. Um, apparently, Man United had a, had a loan to buy bid rejected for him in August and apparently Nottingham Forest and Fulham have also been interested in such as well, people. We've again been linked with Zuba Mendy, but he's got a release clause of 53 million and seems quite happy at Sociedad currently, people. And Douglas Louise, who we're going to get to see an audition at the weekend, really, when Arsenal play against Aston 
Aston Villa. We all know Arsenal have tried to get Douglas Louise. We all know there's an admiration, but it comes down to price tag. You've got no reason to leave Aston Villa currently. You know, if you want to move, they'll sell you in the summer. They're flying high with their season. They've got good players. They're building something special. If you want Douglas Louise, you're going to have to pay something that's ridiculous, which for me is the case with Ivan Tony in January, Pedro Neto in January, obviously Douglas Louise, Paulinho. And for that matter, almost anyone you're linked with in the Premier League and anyone in general. Um, apparently, Arsenal have submitted their financial records for June 2024. So that means David Raya will be, you know, his account, his his transfer will go through next accounting year. And it's also said Ivan Tony and Pedro Neto remain firm targets. And both players are thought to be keen on moves to the club. And you're seeing Ivan Tony on Instagram. He's doing his best to, to be like Mikhail on Woodrick. We've been tempted to revisit looking at Ferran Torres. Allegedly, he's fell out with Xavi. We've been linked with him before. And if he has fallen out, that's probably where the bulk of the rumours are concerned, people. We all know we're interested in Ivan Tony and allegedly Brentford are open to selling but only at the right price and they've slapped a £60 million asking price on his head following interest from Arsenal apparently he is contracted until 2025 he does have 18 months left on his deal and he has got new agents and apparently the club are confident of driving a hard bargain in the new year despite his apparent desire to join the North London club would be an upgrade on Eddie Nketiah with the greatest of respect we've been linked with Torres people apparently he's annoyed with his lack of game time he he is 23. He is quite versatile. So again, if he's available on loan, I guess that could be a body that Mikel Arteta is looking for. But again, you would imagine, while I wouldn't necessarily say no if Arteta wants this, if we are to sum up loan deals or get business done, defence and midfield, def midfield definitely this month. Defence definitely in the last few weeks are of greater priorities and that's where the bulk of the budget needs to go to people. Ferran Torres is very hot and cold, if I'm honest. I think he's decent, but it is what it is in that regards, people. Um, so we'll have to see really where Ivan Tony and, and that is concerned. Uh, Romano has said Arsenal are one of the English clubs interested in João Paulinho. It's true that um, Arsenal appreciate the player. There are people, some people at Arsenal that consider him a very good player. He's been discussed in term, internally, but discussions is all that it could be. Again, people, once again, all the reports are linking up with João Paulinho. Again, he's going to he's going to cost a lot of money, um, which we already know. Um, Romano also said, what I can confirm about Paulinho, this was around the media in recent days, is there are also in English clubs interested in Paulinho, and one of those clubs is Arsenal. It's true that Arsenal appreciate the player. There are some people at the club who consider Paulinho a very good player. It's one they discussed internally. There are two issues. The first one is age. He's not super young. I think next year he'll be 29. Also, the price. Arsenal can't spend that amount, something like 70 million or 80 or one more midfielder after spending the big amount of money they invested on in Declan Rice. My feeling is if Arsenal will try to do something very big, it will be for Douglas Luiz, but it's going to be more than tough because Aston Villa don't want to sell the player. Arsenal love Douglas Luiz, but Aston Villa, we have to start considering Aston Villa as a top club, not just a normal club. They're doing fantastic. They have great vision, great board, great manager, great players, so we have to respect them. And rightly so, Aston Villa deserve respect, essentially. Once again, this has actually said Arteta will not block any move for Kiri or people. Apparently, he's made it clear that he will not block any deals if they're good and the belief is Kirio is not irreplaceable of course he's not but I think this is just when Mikel Arteta spoke vaguely about people departing in, in January um, in relation to Rams though he said I want Aaron with us I'm very happy to have two very good goalies and Aaron is staying with us I won't say that no player is going to go to no Newcastle or no member of staff I can't I cannot guarantee that nobody's going to leave in January for Newcastle or any other club like any player Aaron wants to play for Arsenal as for England it's not like he has started a lot of games, so hopefully we can help him be better here so he can play for England. We want to be better, so we want to add that's the intention. So there you have that, people. And we've also been linked with, apparently, the American Thomas Muller. We have been linked with this American wonder kid prior, Rokas uh, Pustakas. I can't pronounce his name, people. Um, apparently, he spent time at Barcelona before moving uh, Barcelona's academy in America before moving to Europe. He's eligible to play for America. He's represented them at under 20 level people. Apparently, Arsenal and a number of clubs are looking at the 19-year-old people as he continues to impress for split in Croatia this year. Um, so we'll have to see people. I think this is more of a long-term target, but why not really? Apparently, a Croatian outlet has revealed that Arsenal scouts were going to be in attendance for you know his game this week. So I we'll have to see how that's going to go. He's currently contracted until 2027 and he's valued 
valued at 3 million euros. So it could be a long-term investment that could have the potential to progress into Arsenal's first team or for 3 million could turn into 13 or 23 or 33. We sell, we keep it moving. So let me know your thoughts on Douglas, Louise, Paulinho, you know, Arsenal's priorities. Would you prioritise midfield or defence? Would you dip into the loan market? Who would you get? What do you make of Monaco's Fufana? Let me know your thoughts on everything we've discussed, people. Smash the like button, subscribe if you haven't. Check out the rest of the content. But for now, I'm going to love and leave you.